Hey guys, you're Marta Geek. In this video, I'm going to be creating a, an external SSD drive with this SSK M2. ME NVMe SSD enclosure. Now, keep in mind the reason that I'm doing this is because I was actually going to buy an external SSD, but they are very expensive. They could go for like around $200, $150, depending on the storage that you're looking for. And I was like, "Wait a second, I have a, an, an SSD." drive thanks to my latest upgrade that i did to my my laptop so i decided to go ahead and do a, buy an ex, an, an enclosure and just create my own that way i can actually use it with my xbox um series s when it actually comes out or i can i can actually use it for the playstation 5 as well to transfer files as well now keep in mind also have you seen the video for the playstation 5 the drive that you will be able to put it's something like this. It's this same. It's this same PCIe M2 M.2 2080 drive, but it's gonna be 4.0. This right here is actually 3.0. The one that the PlayStation 5 is gonna get, was gonna be compatible with, is 4.0. But it looks identically like this. That's how it actually looks like. It's very tiny. Um, so here I just got this. This costs like around 20 something dollars. Um, look at here in the back, it says adopt type C inter interface, support USB 3.1 Gen 2. Um, you have aluminum alloy combined with sandblasting, anodized process, blah blah blah. Equipped with USB A, USB C, two data cables, and here are the specifications as well. Right there, it's compatible with the M2 M.2 M MVME protocol 22. 42, 2260, 2280 sizes. There you go. So let's go ahead and take this out of here. And I'm also going to leave links for this in my descriptions. Uh, there's also different brands available. I was between this one and a brand from Ugreen. Ugreen also does good um, devices like this as well. Um, here are the instruction manuals. I already went over them a little bit, you know, just to get familiarized with how you put them together. There you go. Look at that. It's not that hard to put up. And um, here you got these cables, which is cool that it actually includes a USB-C to USB-A or a USB-C to USB-C. That's awesome that it actually includes these two cables. And we will take that out. It also includes the tools. It also includes a little tool that you need, just a little little screwdriver there, and uh, I'm going to put this over here. These are the screws that I'm going to need, and the washer that I'm going to need for that. Whoa! <laughs> here is the enclosure. Look how cool it actually looks. It has USB-C over here, nothing over here. The screw goes over there and this slides off and we're going to go ahead and put the ssg drive here now keep in mind this is not the first time i actually do this uh last time i did it was when i replaced my playstation 4 hard drive uh it's a 2.5 9 millimeter hard drive and i i bought this one and actually made a video for it and like you see there these are very convenient because for just a few dollars you could just create a very good external hard drive and this i've been using i've been using it since i actually made the video for this one right here and this one is a 500 gigabytes and i got it from the playstation 4 so this is a playstation 4 hard drive that i made i decided to go ahead and made a, a, a one of these drives external and it's been working great since then i've been using it for backing up videos from my playstation 4 xbox computer all that you name it Okay, so here is the drive. It's gonna take the drive out. Always be careful with these drives. Don't touch them too much, like all around the chips and all that. So here we go. We got that like that. Cool. So this right here is gonna go this way in. We'll put it like that. Boom. boom. There you go. It went in right there. And now we're going to get one of these washers. See these washers right here. Whoop. And we're going to put it. Remember the, the instructions are in the instru instruction manual. I already read them. So we're going to put this like that. You see there. Just going like that. Then you're going to put it down. 
There you go. And now on this side, we're going to put the screw to screw it in on this side. Okay, let's see how hard this is going to be. There you go. Oy. This is the first time I actually do it on, a, on an SSD drive. Normally, okay, let's go ahead and do it. There you go. Oh, yeah, that was easy. Nice. It went in. Okay, that's not going to come off anytime soon. Look at that. That's already done right there. So, one thing to keep in mind is that um, it is recommended to actually put a thermal pad. Like you see here, it says attach the uh, thermal pad, conduct the pad to the SSD. Please paste appropriately, not beyond the edges of the SSD. Uh, but the thing is, I don't know if this was supposed to come with a thermal pad or not. I don't see no thermal pad anywhere. So what I'm going to do is that I do have some thermal pad, you know, from uh, the last upgrade I did to my computer. And I'm just going to use this. This is my own thermal pad. Um, let's go and see if it's the proper size. Yeah, it's the proper size. That's good. Perfect. Uh, this, you could get it very cheap. This, you could get it on Amazon, like for... Um, I bought a pack of five, I think it was, a pack of six, and it cost me like, uh, I think like $2 or something like that. If you just need one, you might get it for $1. It's very, very, very stupid cheap. Okay, so this, you want to put it, line it up. There you go. So this is how I line it up. The reason you want to use that is because these drives could get hot, right? They're, it, it doesn't mean that it's going to get hot, but it could get hot. And this prevents it from overheating. And uh, now we're going to go and try to put it in. I hope it's not that thick. Okay, guys. So I encountered a problem here because this thermal pad right here, I guess this is too thick, you know, because this also comes in different sizes and different thickness. And this one that I have right here apparently is too thick because when I try to slide it in, um, it has like a security plastic in the back that if the drive goes down too much, it won't actually let you, you know, push it in. And you're not supposed to force it in at all. Okay, guys, don't ever try to force it in because if not, you're going to break or the drive or you're going to break this. And that's you. That's something you don't want to do. It's going to be way more expensive. So and apparently... You know, I'm looking here in the menu, and this, there was supposed to be a thermal pad. Look at that. There was supposed to be a thermal pad inside of the box, and I double-checked everywhere. Oh, look at the screws going everywhere now. I double-checked everywhere, every single where inside of the box again. I checked inside of the little bag again, and apparently they forgot to put it in. So I'm going to have to, you know, finish the video without the thermal pad. And I'm going to have to send them a message let them know, hey, guys, you didn't send me a thermal pad. It was missing. It's here on the menu. You see there, it says that it has a thermal pad. And most likely, it has the appropriate one, right? Which is supposed to be a lot more thinner than this one. And it's not. So, you know, so we have the video as evidence. That way, they can see that, hey, it's true. I didn't have it. So that kind of sucks because, you know, I will I would have want this video to go flawlessly, but it didn't. So what I'm going to do, I'm still going to finish this drive. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in. Like I said, the reason for the thermal pad is that to prevent this from overheating. Uh, but right now, I'm not going to be using it that much. And the only reason I'm going to be using it is to transfer files from one side to another side. And that's it. Um, but if you're going to be planning on playing from the ssd drive you better have the thermal pad i recommend to actually make sure you actually have the thermal pad because uh it will you know it will cause of heating so make sure you actually have that now here we're done right let's gonna put that down there put that there and slide it in man that that thermal pad must be very damn thin because that was a very tight there and it didn't have no thermal pad whatsoever so that was very tight there i don't know that's got to be a crazy damn thin thermal pad so here we got another screw which is the last screw we're going to use and let's go it goes here in the outside there you go and uh, that's it so we are done here 
putting together the external SSD drive. And like you see there, we still have some extra screws just in case you actually lose your screws. Some of the screws, because they're so tiny. That's good that they actually thought about that. But like I said, this, this was supposed to have a thermal pad inside of the box and there was no ter thermal pad to find whatsoever. But this is done now. All you have to do is connect this to the USB-C. You know, see there, if you have a MacBook or uh, another laptop that has a USB-C drive, you could do it like that. Or if you're gonna connect it to the Xbox, the Xbox USB-C over here, and you use the USB type A, connects to the Xbox, and that's it. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to the Xbox and see if I can transfer a file and see if it actually lets me format it with the Xbox. Let's go, let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, so I already did connect my SSD drive to my Xbox One X, which is the Cyberpunk edition. And uh, I loaded up and I didn't really see a message saying that I recognize a new drive. Uh, maybe it's because this thing was resetting and I wasn't able to look at the screen. But let's go ahead and uh, go to system or storage. Let's go storage right here. And nope. Nothing there. It should be right here. It should be right here in storage. So what I'm going to do again, I'm going to unplug it and plug it back in. See if it does something at all. Okay, there you go. Okay, there you have it. So what I did is that I unplugged it and plugged it back in. And now it says use for media or for games and apps. If you choose to use this storage external device for media, videos, music, pictures, you'll keep any content that's currently on the drive. If you choose to use it for games and apps, the drive needs to be formatted Everything on the drive will be erased. You manage this device later in settings storage device. So we can use it for media, which, which is music, video, and pictures, or we can, we can actually choose format storage device. Okay. So if you're just going to use this to transfer music, videos, and pictures, I guess this is the one that you want to choose. This time I'm gonna do this one, uh, format storage device. Um, I could name it whatever I want right there, but I'm just gonna leave it like that. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Install things on SSK USB drive device by default. If you make SSK USB drive the place to install new games and apps, we'll use that from now on. You can change this anytime in the settings and storage. Okay, so right now I could use install new things here or keep current location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it current location and I'm just going to install things here whenever I want. So because it says right there, you can change this anytime in settings, system, storage. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Keep current location. Uh, it says format SSK drive. When formatting is done, you'll be able to use the games on and apps on SSK drive with any Xbox console you plug into it. It will be usable with on only with Xbox consoles. Okay, format device. Okay, there you go. External storage is ready. There you go. So now, like you see there, I got some extra new storage. I could use this device for actually the Xbox Series S or X if I want to. Right here it says view content, install here by default. So like you see there, at any time, you can go ahead and change this at any time. I install here by default, move or copy, uninstall things, rename, format. Oh, I can rename it if I want set at capture location that's cool because if you capture like videos and all that we're using the recording button you can set it to always set the capture to this location which is cool um here if i choose move or copy let's see what i can do here dun, dun. right now there's nothing in the drive so i can't move or copy anything okay what about here view content move or copy so here I got the games that I have on my current SSD. 
So if I want to move something here, let's go and try to move something that's not too big. You know, let's see how fast it is. It should be, like I said, guys, it should be a lot more faster than your regular hard drive. We go, let's go ahead and take this one. This one is 10 gigabytes, 10.8 gigabytes. Select, unselect, copy, move. Let's go ahead and select uh, move. Let's go ahead and move. You're about to move one thing from the external from internal to ssk usb drive okay yes go ahead move it okay so right now it's going to go ahead and move it to the external ssd drive and i see there it's going pretty fast it is going pretty fast okay it says complete in about two minutes and 22 seconds okay that's not bad when you think about it, it's better than uninstalling or deleting the application from the console. Because let's say later on in the future you want to play this game again. And if your internet is slow, you know, that's the that's the bad thing about it. If your internet is slow, then you're going to have to re-download this again. It might, you know, it might affect your internet. It might, if you have a cap, it's going to hit your cap. If you keep in uninstalling and downloading, uninstalling and downloading games... Um, your cap is going to get hit. Like if you have a cap in your home, internet is going to get hit. So, you know, so far, I'm pretty sure this drive is not going to have any problems whatsoever because it's a great drive that I got from a Dell XPS. Um, and uh, the enclosure, I the reason that I bought it is because it had good reviews. You know, it has over thousands of good reviews. And most likely, they forgot to actually put the thermal pad in it. Which kind of sucks because I, I would have loved to finish the installation perfectly without any flaws whatsoever. Uh, but like I said, um, you know that's something that I can go ahead and put later on. And I'm just going to contact the company and let them know, hey, I bought this from you. I made a video for it. And like you see on the video, your thermal pad was not included. That's exactly what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do. Believe me, guys. I'm going to let them know that your, the thermal pad was not inside here. Um, the reason I'm keeping this is because I'm doing this video. If I was you guys and I, and, and this happens to you, I will recommend to actually, do, uh, return it or contact the company and they should, you know, give it back, give you a refund or send you a thermal pad or send you a new drive with a thermal pad. That's what's supposed to happen. There you go. That was it. So we got 10 gigabytes, 10.8 gigabytes and a little bit over two minutes that's not bad at all that's awesome so like you see here if i want to keep moving stuff i could go ahead and keep moving stuff right now i got some game here i could see move or content look at that i could move content anytime from my drive external drive that's awesome and that's it that's awesome so if i want to play that game i'm pretty sure let me see something if I go to games and I go to Battletoads, okay, it's actually going to be loading the game from the drive. Is it? I don't think so. Because I, I don't think I put, I selected um, play from in external. It says Battletoad needs an update. The size of the update is around, blah, blah, blah. okay, this could take a while. Well, okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and update the game there. So there you have it, guys. Uh, just want to share this uh, little video with you guys. Um, like you see there, I would be able to play the game from the drive, but it needs an update. Just like always, every time I, I, I open these consoles, they always need a damn freaking update. But, you know, the purpose of this video was to show you guys that you can actually create your own external SSD drive because they're pretty expensive. They go over $150, $200. But with uh, twenty between twenty to thirty dollars, I'll leave I'll leave links in my descriptions for some of for some recommended drive external enclosures that you could buy and you know would work for you. I still recommend this one, you know, be, even though it didn't include my thermal pad. I'm pretty sure it, it was a mistake because it has a lot of great reviews. It has a lot of great reviews and it, it has a very good build quality. So I'm pretty sure, you know, they just forgot to include it there. But guys, I'll leave links in my description for this drive and thermal pads and other enclosures for other drives as well. 
So thanks for watching this video. Till next time, guys. Bye-bye.